Actually, uh, I didn't have too many talents, you know. I was quite good in drawing and I was quite good in tinkering and repairing stuff. So one day I came across this school where they did these drawings and they did uh, model building. And since I was always into bikes, so I thought this is something I can do. So I think it's quite a natural development that I became a motorbike designer. I always draw. I mean, if you look at my old school books, they're all full with sketches and doodles. And it's not even conscious. It's kind of a flow, it just, it just happens. I'm a big fan of these walkers or these kind of machine stuff. Moving machines is pretty fascinating because basically I think it, it transports the idea of human mankind to just increase the, the abilities. You have more power, you are faster, you are more uh, precise. When I was young in my family, if something was defect, we didn't call a craftsman or something. We always tried to fix it ourselves. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we ruined lots of parts, like the iron of my mom or something like this, the washing machine. But we learned quite a lot. My first bike I had at the age of 17, and of course it was an old bike, so yeah, you have to fix it. I mean, the piston was always kaput. And along with riding bikes, you learn fixing bikes. When I was young, I had to sell a bike to get a bigger bike. But it was always like giving away a child, more or less. So I told myself, whenever I can afford it, I don't want to give away any more of my bikes. So this is why I ended up with 16 bikes now. The K1200R came at a time where BMW motorbike was already consolidated, I could say. So I did a pretty provocative design. To my big surprise, this design was even chosen. It was a design which was not really reasonable just by technology, quality, precision, but also by emotion. And that was, that was pretty new and very different from the designs before. The motorbike design is a combination of art and craftsmanship. But I would say it's more of craftsmanship than art. I think you have to have a big understanding of how a motorbike works, what is underneath an engine cover, what is behind this fairing thing. It's a pretty complicated, complex thing. Cool and loud. You define a bike first by the proportion. If the proportion is not correct, you can forget the rest. Then you have to find the right gesture, the right design, the right formal language. And then you have to make the details. And the details are again defined by the segment you're in. Are you off-road talking, or are you race bike talking, or are you cruiser talking, whatever. Cool. I mean, proportion, everything is perfect, I would say. It's difficult to say how a good design is defined. I would say the good design is when you have a perfect combination of technology and aesthetics. For us, a bike is not finished as long as the rider is not on the bike. If you sit like this on a bike, with a handlebar like that, it's kind of a bit, okay, uh, non-active. While you just bend the handlebar a little bit out, you sit very different. It becomes a very different gesture. It's like active, aggressive almost. And of course it transports your image and your feeling and your mindset to the outside. A motorbike is the biggest accessory you can wear. I did lots of off-road riding and uh, I always wanted to have a boxer engine with not so much weight. Finally, the job came along that we had to do a new GS. Basically, I did the bike I wanted to do for me. That was actually the R1200 GS. I really believe that R1200 GS was the bike which put BMW Motorrad on the map of global motorbike manufacturers. It was actually the best sold plus 750 bike worldwide. Yeah, I was uh, out in India for three years 
The decision to do this was a very personal one. I mean, I kind of saw myself on this railroad track, you know, and you see, you know exactly what you're doing until retirement. And I was a bit scared about this, you know, so I thought I, I want to do, I want to do something else for a certain time. So I worked in Majash Auto Limited, which is a very well-known company in India. They build five million bikes per year. I was a vice president R&D product design. Every day you see something really exciting, something really cool. It was a big adventure somehow to me. As you see, I'm tinkering on these old bikes, but this is not that I'm a just a fan of old bikes. I also appreciate very much high-tech bikes and everything. But the cool thing on these old bikes is that you see the mechanics and you see the semantics in the mechanics. You have lots of these gadgets nowadays, like computers, telephones. They work perfectly, but you do not see how they work. And this is something which is inherent to mankind. You want to see mechanics. It's for the belly somehow. The virtual stuff is more for the brain. And you have to have a balance somehow on these things. To a certain extent, mechanics is the luxury of the future. <laughs> Good. I actually customized an R51. I mean, this is like 10 years ago or something. And we drove up at work and we showed it. And everybody loved the bike. And we said, oh, we have to do something like this with a, with a new concept. And then we did the show bike, this custom concept. It took a while, but uh, we achieved it finally on the R90. I mean, everybody loves this bike. Yeah? This is so nice to see. And you don't even have to explain anything anymore. Our claim, like precision and emotion, this is kind of self-explaining on the bike, which is, I think, also a milestone in, in the company's history. I think in 10 years we will look back and say, man, this is a real cool, this is a real cool bike we did. When you go home after like an eight or 10 hour day and you do the same stuff what you do at work, it's probably a, a dream job, yeah.